Well, good morning, Adele. Good morning, Claire. I love where you're sitting. I'm looking up at these beautiful icons and, um, you know, and of course it takes me uh, many different places, but one of them is to your home. And, uh, and those are all the icons you've written. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> and why do they call it writing icons for those that don't know? Because icons are theology and they're meant to be read. They're not just pictures to look at. Mm -hmm. Theology that's red and colors and positioning and hands and items that are in the icons all carry meaning. Mm -hmm. And it is a portal for prayer. So beautiful. I, I, I love writing icons. And uh, a portal for prayer, which is, you know, the, the word, the characteristic today of Christ uh, that we're looking at in this Advent season, that Christ indeed was prayerful. And if we look at the life of Christ, all the ways that Christ prayed, all the ways that um, we might not have identified as um, a portal of prayer, uh, or a, a kind of prayerful experience, but indeed we know that um, Christ embodied uh, this kind of living that teaches us to pray. And um, I, I will, I, I will um, ask you if we can uh, tell people about your Advent icon that you wrote a few years ago. Uh, with Mary and Eve. We, we won't maybe talk about that today, but it would be good for folks to know that um, that icon might be available to them. Uh, as, and so we can put that link at the bottom. But I, I love that you write prayer. I love that you've written books coloring the Psalms as a way to be prayerful. Uh, I, I love, of course, um, spiritual disciplines for the um, handbook, the spiritual disciplines handbook in so many ways to pray. And then of course, uh, spiritual rhythms for the Enneagram, which is um, our baby together. Our baby together. Yeah. And, um, and, and when we think about fours and the beautiful presence of fours, friends, uh, the Enneagram four is the original. Um, they show us the origin of God. And I love the beauty of the fours when they embody God, they incarnate God with this uh, introspective creativity. And when they're led by the Holy Spirit, they're in, you know, they're intuitive and uh, depth and height kind of nature also can be happy go lucky. Um, they can be integrated, you know, as, as fours and, and show us the embodied Christ, the incarnated Christ, when they are living from this uh, wonderful, brilliant beauty um, without destructive extremism. And, you know, my, um, my love for fours being the embodiment of Christ um, really, you are an icon for me. You're a way for me to see. You're a way, this written theology um, uh, of God's own spoken word over your life. So prayerful and, and prayerful, prayerful. So uh, Adele, you even did a, um, a small group last night of 50 people from Harvard uh, where you talked about um, uh, prayers for COVID. And I wonder if you'd like to, in your prayerful way of embodying Christ's presence as prayerful, could, could tell us a way that, one, Christ has been made known to you as prayerful. So let's start there. How did you meet Christ as prayerful uh, in your life? How do you see Christ as prayerful in scripture or in experience? I think that initially as a child um, and as a young person growing up in the church, the most evident things are that Jesus goes to the temple to pray at the hours of prayer. We know that the temple prayers were multiple times a day that he prayed in the way all of his ancestors had prayed. 
and then that he um, gave thanks over food and he taught the Lord's prayer mm -hmm. and he prayed when he uh, touched people and healed them, that there was this sense of, he, he had a lot of different kinds of ways that he prayed. He prayed in the garden, asking for what he wanted. And when he didn't get what he wanted, he still threw his whole life onto God. Mm -hmm. So you see him praying and getting what he wants. He prays when he has a little bit, like five loaves and two fish, and it becomes a lot. So he prays and miracles happen. He prays and it doesn't look like miracles do happen, but he, he'll pray no matter what, because it is a way of his being connected to Abba. Mm -hmm. It is a way of his life, not being about him and what he can do, but about the presence of God manifest incarnate. Mm. And that word incarnate, you know, God with skin on, that is, uh, that brings me so much hope in these days of, of COVID and um, sadness. And, uh, you know, there's been so much during these days that um, people's, you know, uh, inability to unite people's inability to listen, to hear. Um, and I, I want Jesus with skin on. I want Jesus incarnated in this moment, you know? So uh, Christ has come, Christ will come again. And then Christ continues to come in many, many ways. And um, you were just telling me before we started the taping about the way um, that maybe you incarnate Christ uh, and living like Christ, being like Christ with skin on in the ways that you pray. And you mentioned a prayer for COVID and you can, you can mention all of them if you want to, but I do love this idea of bed prayers because I think there are a lot of people who are losing sleep right now right. and who are waking up in the night and they have fear for their, their loved ones. They don't know what the future is going to hold. They uh, you know, they're, they're moving in their false self patterns um, of, you know, I, how am I going to have security and survival or control or connection? And, um, and so how do you live like Christ in your bed? This is just a fabulous thought about you incarnating Christ in this COVID uh, prayer called bed prayer. Well, I, I agree. I, I've talked to so many people who are not sleeping well during COVID. And, you know, we can, we can not sleep well for many reasons. Sometimes it's just, you know, jittery legs and physical aches and pains and um, jumpy legs. But it also can be that we stay up late doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at screens, um, doing work late into the night, things that don't prepare us to sleep. And then there's just the sense that sometimes it's age, it's a child wakes you, getting up to go to the bathroom. There are all these things that make us wakeful. And when we wake, if our brain engages, Often it goes sort of like you said to catastrophic thinking, you know, what about, what if, what if that? And instead of restfulness, all of a sudden we're agitated and we're rolling around and in the dark things seem more odious and awful than they do in the light. So there we are stewing, mm. um, not praying, agitated. And I feel like it's, it's, then, then fear kicks in and I'm not going to sleep and I'm going to be a grump tomorrow and I won't be prepared, you know? And so we just, it's really awful. <laughs> Speaking personally, it's really, it really is awful. And so for years um, I've been wakeful uh, in the night and just to say, this is my, this is my time to be with God in prayer. And often I will just visualize laying down in Jesus' arms and just say, here I am. And sometimes I'll wake with a song in my mind and I'll 
Just let the song be a prayer. Sometimes a song will come to my mind or a scripture comes to my mind and I will enter that as my prayer. What I don't do in the night is I don't put effort. I don't make it an effortful prayer. You know, where I start, here's my prayer list. I'm going to pray through everybody and I'm going to name. That's not night prayer for me. It's like, I would say Claire and Scott's name. And just hold them in the light of God as I lie there in bed. I want to connect my prayer to Jesus' prayer for you, Claire. But I don't know what that is. So I just say your name. I may say your name many times. But that's effortless. Where if I start trying to bring all I know about your life into my bed, that won't be very <laughs> restful. Now that'll keep you up. <laughs> <laughs> so I think there's just this sense of, you know, Jesus is praying for us. The Holy Spirit is interceding us for, for us with words, groans that that we don't need to go into long prayers that sort of wake our minds up more. We just rest into prayer. And sometimes it's wordless. Sometimes it's tearful. I mean, the psalmists weep in their beds. They cry in their beds. They remember God in their beds. They... Mm -hmm sing in their beds you know they do a lot of thing in bed they do a lot of their spiritual exercises at night in bed <laughs> you know I, I that's really interesting because um my uh, uh you know my idea of being in bed um you know is that you're sleeping uh, you know that's my idea but my experience of being in bed in these days is that i'm awake and um, the, you know, the scripture verse for this day from the lectionary is about uh, being ready and wakeful for the coming of Christ. And that if we're awake to Christ, then I love this version um, that we've connected here. It's, it's uh, the voice and it says, Jesus will put on an apron and make a midnight snack for you. And so even the idea of wakeful isn't this like hyper vigilant alertness where we're, you know, getting all kinds of endorphins or even adrenaline moving in our body, but it's this idea of listening for the prayer. Um, so whether it's tears or whether it's, you know, just seeing the person and, you know, seeing the, the light of Christ upon them, like all the halos on your icons back there, the light of Christ being on the people of God and imagining that grace. Um, and so I think that maybe the Western civilization or certainly since light bulbs and things, we have, uh, we've made wakeful something that really is this is not what the scripture is talking about here it's talking about being present it's talking about being present to presence it's because of course god wants us to sleep that's why we were given night and day because there is this time to go into your bed and then if you awake what is the song what is the prayer what is the the light that god wants to show you and, um, and that's freeing, Adele, that's freeing. I, I told you when we got on the call and I've told you before, I mean, I love when you pray and you, you go like this, you know, and that the drama of God is seen in you. And then I can feel like, like I think sunrises and sunsets are so dramatic, right? And I feel God's presence in that. And when you use your body to pray, it's not you're praying over me, like, okay, stop, let's everybody get on their knees. But just this simple remembering your heart mm -hmm. and then inviting me to remember my heart, that's prayerful. So many ways to be prayerful that are not this, um, you know, something somebody's put on us that is ill fitting. But if you're awake in the night, if there's a song in the night, do you have a special song that's been guiding you through this, uh, this season or are they all different? Is there a, a whole play, Adele's playlist? 
<laughs> I wish I could say there was a playlist. Mm. I think one song that just in the season means a lot to me is the create in me a clean heart, mm. mm -hmm. renew a right spirit, cast me not away from your presence, O Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from me. Mm. Restore to me the joy of my salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. So take not your spirit, give me a willing spirit, a contrite heart, just that sense of the wanting to embody those aspects mm. of um, the character of Jesus. Well, you do embody those aspects of the character of Jesus for me personally on, on so many days, whether present or apart. And um, so I thank you for being here and embodying the love of Christ for me again and telling me that you think of me in the night watches. <laughs> and uh, and that, gives me, that gives me just such, um, such love on this day. And know that you're with me in my night watches you, these days. And, um, and friends, um, I'm gonna be putting in the, the link here, all the ways that you can contact uh, Adele's work uh, through books and on YouTube and, um, and even a, a message she preached at Crossroads Church, which is a message of hope. And so in these days, we need embodied people the embodied presence of Christ. And so we love you, Adele. Thank you. Love you too, Claire. Go with God. <laughs>